five defensive backs in the 335 versus two Bolitnikoff Award candidates. You are Locked On Huskers, your daily podcast on the Nebraska Corn Huskers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, gang, DP here, Derek Pearson, live from Lincoln, Nebraska. We appreciate you. Thank you for making Locked On Huskers your first watch and listen each and every single day as we roll this uh, content through to you over the course of the next four weeks. Getting ready for Beat Minnesota, August 31st. Mark Onweiler, if you would please, let them know about LinkedIn. Thank you, DP. This episode of Lockdown Huskers is brought to you by LinkedIn. Now, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Now, it's super easy to do. If you are watching this on a computer or on your phone, your computer skills are good enough to create a LinkedIn Jobs posting. You add your job and then the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. And as you know, making that right hire makes all the difference. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Now, LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. DP, back to you. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. We're going to spend some time in this in this episode. One, talking about the Minnesota Gophers. Two, we're going to quote the great poet, Coach Foley of the Nebraska Huskers. And then we'll talk about special teams because special teams matter. But we will start with this. And then... Do me a favor. If you have not subscribed, please do. It's content every day. Husker content, your Huskers every day. Go ahead and click the, the subscribe button. Like, share the content. Greatly appreciate it. A um, couple of things jump out that Nebraska going through its, 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 its fall camp. I like to call it summer camp because there's still the fun aspect of it. The, the game aspect happens. Uh, I think the last week is fall camp. I think the first couple of weeks is actually summer camp, at least to, to my thinking and, and to my work. And to hear Nebraska fans talk about this Husker team as much as they can speak about it, because a lot isn't known. Um, but the things that are known, finding out who leaders are, and we'll go through that here shortly, uh, hear from coaches, uh, and then hear from the players about who they think the leaders are. And a wonderful kismet happens when the coaches and the players agree on who's leading. And that doesn't always happen, especially with a new program, a new roster, new coaches. It doesn't always happen, but there seems to be some of that, some connection in who the coaches want to lead this team and who the players know. Are leading this team and there's a huge difference between that um, we'll talk about the special teams we'll talk about a little bit about minnesota uh and their uh great receiving core uh and their quarterback so lots to cover in this in this episode i want to start 335 tony white's 335 defense and nebraska fans focus can focus on the names of of, of their players different players in different situations but also understand mission one for tony white and the Huskers is to beat Minnesota. Mission one is to beat Minnesota. Mission one, priority one on the list before you, as you prepare for everything that you're going to deal with this season, before you can focus on Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffalo, before you de- think about Michigan or before your non con, you have to travel to Minneapolis and face P.J. Fleck and the Minnesota Gophers. And if you have some understanding of what's happened recently with that Minnesota team and some of the conflict and some of the issue, and then the friction between Nebraska fans and P.J. Fleck. And Nebraska fans have 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 highlighted P.J. Fleck as a villain of note to their football program. There's nothing. I'm, I'm truly, aside from Iowa and the, 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 the pure burn that happens when you bring up the Hawkeyes, P.J. Fleck 
elicits a response in Nebraska fans that's pretty interesting to me. One, because he has some understanding of how to beat past Nebraska teams. This is a new and different Nebraska team. The 3-3-5, Tony White's defense, Matt Rule's leadership. Um, there's a lot in play. But the five defensive backs and the three linebackers who play in front of them allow Nebraska to change Minnesota's perception and preparation for the Huskers. Different style of play, different uh, accountabilities, different responsibilities. But with two Blitnikoff Award candidates at wide receiver, and I want to just be clear and point out to you that it, it there's a there's a an interesting aspect to this. So Ethan Kaliak Manis is the quarterback, and Nebraska fans, a little bit of the hair on the back of your neck should have just stood up because he came in, uh, replaced uh, Tanner Morgan, and led the Gophers uh, to, to a come-from-behind win a year ago. Off the bench, he was fluid in the run game, broke down uh, the pass pressure, uh, moved the chains with his feet a couple of times in, in big possessions uh, along the way, and then made big throws when needed uh, to secure the win. Um, and then him on the ground late to, 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 to kind of secure it was important. But they have two receivers that are on the Blitnikoff Award uh, candidate list, and Corey Crooms and Elijah Spencer. Now, they, they're not the same. Um, Spencer is a bona fide Z, playmaker, big ball, great ball skills, uh, great feet as well. But in their slot uh, – is where the danger lies because inside of whoever's playing outside, and here's the thing to make note, the two Blitnikoff candidates may not be the two best receivers on the team. That Chris Oppen Bell and on, on one side and Daniel Jackson, whether it's uh, uh, Brockington or Jackson at the other, at the X and the Z, but Crooms is the one that creates a most, the most amount of trouble in weird space. The fifth defensive back may have responsibility on Crooms. Linebackers are going to have to be aware because he's what we call him a pocket picker and that he gets behind linebackers, gets on their hip, and then option routes into space, open space, to allow quarterback to make easy throws. And he may be the best after-the-ball guy um, for the Gophers. But with five defensive backs and three, now you're talking about defending 15 spots on the field that are that you can throw to with, with eight defensive backs. One, assuming and hoping and praying to goodness that the front three guys can get pressure for you. <laughs> you hope that. If you're bringing a fourth, the advantage is that they don't know where the fourth is coming from, uh, which changes their scheme and may throw off the timing of the route combinations they put in place. But Crooms and Spencer, and Spencer, uh, the younger of the two, has the ability to break tackles, get into space, make big plays out of small plays. Nebraska is going to have to tackle. Defensive backs, uh, that, that secondary is going to have to tackle. They're working on it. And I know that's a Tony White thing that we deal with. But as Nebraska goes through its list of players, and again, you lose your second leading tackler out of the secondary, players have begun to, to stand up and step up for Nebraska. One of them being Icy Gifford, who spoke uh, to the media. Then some names were dropped that we will share with you in the next segment. So you understand some of the players who were, who, who were putting in work and having a good, a good camp. But it bodes well for, for, for Tony White and Matt Rule. If players are stepping up, that you have the confidence to sit down your number two defensive back because you have enough guys behind them who are willing to step up and step into play. And as I, I just whispered to you, with, those, with that receiving group and a quarterback that has no fear of this end, you're going to need defensive backs in full in Minneapolis. We're forward to break. More Locked on Huskers. When we come back. Hey, gang, DP again. Thank you for making Locked on Huskies your first watch and listen each and every single day. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Click the button. Um, and then if you got questions, put them in the comments down below, and I'll get back to them. I always read them. Yes, I do. Thank you. for Even if you don't like what I say, I still read them, and I'm going to thank you for it because that's how this works. I want your input. 
Um, if done right, if this is done right, this becomes our show, not my show. Um, but that's what we're doing. A um, couple of things in the defensive back group. And again, if Isaac Gifford is being identified by both the players on this roster and the coach, the coaches in this roster and the coaches of those groups, as a leader of the secondary, that's a big statement. It's a huge statement. We, we, we have some understanding of Malcolm Hard Dog and what he brings. But the name uh, Deshaun Singleton pop, keeps popping up in conversation with coaches and players about a player who's stepping up and expanding his game and is, is getting bigger reps and doing more with him. Pay attention to those things, those, those name drops. This coaching staff doesn't have the traction to just banner about names without those names having placed themselves in the conversation. So Deshaun Singleton and Isaac Gifford are talking about good things happening in the secondary, then we can feel better. Nebraska fans can feel better. I'll also say this, though, and remember, you're going to walk into Minneapolis with five quality receivers uh, at, the, at, at those three receiver positions, stud tight ends, two of them that can play in space and create problems. Basically, if you get them in a run, they in a, from a run set, they have pass receiving tight ends. And they're, they're not asked to do a lot, but they're good at what they're asked to do, which is to get open off the hash, either inside or outside, with options and, again, giving a quarterback um, easy throws to make and easy uh, optics. So the, the vision is good for him to see and, and to know what's going on. But this group of defensive backs, even with I mean, and, and another name that was brought about was Omar Brown. The third name, the fourth name that that really spent a lot of time in traffic the la this weekend and going forward is a name that Nebraska fans may not put into their top five defensive backs naturally, but Tommy Hill. Tommy Hill is the, is a name that players on the team will talk about and say, you know, who's having a really good camp even from a leadership standpoint. And some that's what happens sometimes. If you lose a leader, you lose one of your ones and twos, that somebody steps up, somebody's been waiting for the opportunity, somebody has prepared for you, and it opens the door for somebody with talent because we know Tommy Hill has talent. Then it becomes opportunity. And when the opportunity comes, is he prepared? Is he prepared? Well, it appears that Tommy Hill is willing. He's been prepared. Now it's his time to step up, and he he has. I want to give a quote from Coach Coach Foley um, in his in his uh, post practice interviews, and he said the game doesn't care. The game doesn't care. And he was speaking about injury. He was speaking about not being able to prepare for everything that will come into play against uh, versus Minnesota. The game doesn't care if you haven't repped that particular thing sequence. Uh, formation, structure, uh, call and response, audible. The game doesn't care if you only have 20 reps at an empty backfield or 20 reps in an emergency group on the field on fourth and three or fourth and one or short yardage where somebody decides to go or, you know, bad marking or questionable marking of a first down and knowing whether to keep your defense on the field uh, or not, or put your run defense on the field rather instead of your pass defense. The game doesn't care what you've prepared on. The game will throw you situation, circumstance, opportunity. And good teams have a plan. Good teams have a plan for what to do in those unique situations. Winning teams, great winning teams have practiced it and there's a huge difference and you could you could mark you can go through the short short-term memory in your brain about the recent nebraska games about where certain situations you can tell that a thing hasn't been repped enough for nebraska to be fluid and how to handle it and to hear coach foley talk about it and the players talk about listen the reps are important Summer camp is about reps. Fall camp is about preparedness. And to see that you can peek over the fence from summer to fall and say, 
listen, there are some situations that we need to prepare for. And I'm going to throw them at you. I'm going to be purposeful for that. And give our, 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 our new starters, whoever they are, you know, depth charts one and twos, but also to give coaches reps. And people miss the fact that coaches need the, this summer camp as well, especially a new coaching staff, because they need to go through, they need to make mistakes, they need to learn their what, what the responsibilities are, what the reactions are going to be whose voice needs to be loudest in said situation, and then to have the actual verbiage that you're going to use when chaos happens. Think of a fire at the house. The conversation that you had at the conversation uh, in the house before the fire is not the same verbiage and not the same energy and chaos level as when the fire breaks out. You need to be able to communicate when chaos happens. Nebraska is actually working on what happens when chaos so that we have a plan for chaos. The coaching rule is this. When chaos happens, slow down. And when you slow down, chaos ceases to exist. Planning for chaos and being able to execute when a chaos happens <clears throat> will be a wonderful sign for Nebraska football. It will say, we're okay. We're ready for this. We will not be brand new. The days of, of being brand new have to be short. Again, the game doesn't care. The Big Ten, the game in the Big Ten doesn't care if you're a new coaching staff or you have new players. Doesn't care. We'll throw it a break. When we come back, we'll close up, talk a little bit more about the special teams. And then there's a word being thrown about that we need to focus on when it comes to Nebraska football this coming up season. <laughs> Hey, gang, thank you for hanging out with us. Locked on Huskers, Lincoln, Nebraska. Again, click the subscribe button, get this, share it, reach out, put your comments down in the comment section. Again, the hype train in the Kool-Aid van is picking up speed, and we understand what that is. Um, I still don't know why there's not a Nebraska Kool-Aid. Like, why is there not a Nebraska red Kool-Aid? Like, I, it should be thing. Um, there's a word that's been bantered by, bandied about uh, around Nebraska football. It is a word that is often misspoken about. It's a word that is important. It's at the top of the list for, for words within a football program and within a football team. It is a word that has the most value when it comes to player to coach and coach to player. It also comes into play when it comes to the fan base and the parents and the community. And the word has been pushed around recently about this football team. The word is trust. This roster now is really starting to trust this coaching staff. And to tell you how big this is, when the coaches say it's important for us to earn that trust, not be given that trust, earn that trust by being of value and being consistent and having standards and then holding to those standards and not being fluid and going, well, those are the rules, except for their exceptions to the rule. Coaching 101 chapter and verse if there's an exception to the rule, then there is no rule. And that rule is making a point. With some of the things that have happened within the program, being grown-ups in the room and having grown-ups in the room that you trust, that can be trusted and are worthy of trust, is how good teams become good programs. And it's certainly the way bad teams become good teams. Earning the player's trust is important. And you do that by being of your word, holding true to your standard, having a plan for chaos, and then in delivering truth with your love and love with your truth. Those are important things. And it says, it seems to exist 
in the current space that we're in for Nebraska football. We did get some news from Coach O'Brien and special teams and saying, well, we think Billy Kemp, the fourth, might be our punt returner. Actually, he's pretty sure he's his punt return. It goes back to the first word I used in this segment. They trust him. They trust him. They trust him to handle the ball in chaos because there's no position of greater chaos than having your eyes up to the sky, tracking a football that's spinning and rotating, and having to trust your teammates to have your back so that your head does not get taken off when you catch it. (laughs) Well done, Billy Kemp Ford, for earning said trust. And well done, Coach Matt Rule and Coach Coach Foley, for finding someone you trust early on and making the statement that trust matters. We'll close with the three words we love so much. We greatly appreciate you hanging out with us. This has been Locked on Huskers, and the three words are go big.